Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. Today I want to show you a little bit about how I use Trello for project management. And this is going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial where we walk through setting up a new Trello board for a specific project uh, or maybe a, a bunch of projects in a, for a team. Um, and then I'll walk through each of the lists that we use in, in our typical project planning process and then uh, throughout execution and, and completion. So uh, let's get started. So first of all, I'm gonna pretend like we are creating a new board for some marketing projects that we're, we're gonna work on with the team. Uh, the first thing I would do is set up a new list called backlog. And the backlog is generally gonna be ideas and loosely formed concepts or, or things that we want to work on that may not have a lot of flavor to them yet. So let's just say we're setting up social media accounts. Um, we know we want to uh, send outreach emails weekly. We know we want to set up email templates, uh, etc. So we're setting up some general ideas for marketing things. Usually at the backlog phase, we don't put more than just a few little like random notes throughout here. So maybe we're going to say Twitter, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, etc. Uh, so uh, again, the, these are not fully formed yet. So what we'll do is next we'll create a list for planning. And this will have all the cards that we're currently adding some texture to. We're figuring out what the details are gonna be. So let's take the setup email templates, for example. When I'm planning, I use a framework that I uh, was taught a few years ago, and I don't even remember who, but I've used it with teams for a number of years. And there's basically three main questions that you wanna answer when working within this framework. The first one is, uh, what are we doing? The second one is, why are we doing it? And the third is, how should it be done? So I like to lay out my cards with these three questions first before I really start getting in there and planning and go ahead and save that. So what I would do next is I would fill in all the details. I'm not gonna actually fill in all the details, but um, the reason that these three questions are important, what are we doing is kind of a high level, one to two sentence description typically of the project why we're doing it is typically going to, it's what it, the goal there is to give employees who work on it some context. So I find that giving people a, a task without giving them the reasoning behind it is sometimes very, it, it leads to misaligned expectations. It leads to them sort of making assumptions that we don't necessarily want them to make. So giving people the why is always really helpful. And then finally, how should it be done is gonna be any notes about the specifics that you want. So maybe this is a list of deliverables that you want uh, to be done, uh, delivered at the end of this project so we know it's complete. It could be a, a person who should be emailed to, um, to sort of notify them or, or maybe leave a comment to notify them when it's done so they can check it over. It could be um, just some maybe HTML templates that we've used in the past and you know we're gonna reuse or fix for this. So it could be very specific to this project. So at this stage, we've got things that are, ideally once you've got all the details in there, the next phase of the project is ready. And ready means that the project is, uh, or the card is ready to be worked on. Now, depending on the granularity of this board, each project might be just a quick one to two hour task, or it might be a day or two's worth of work. There's really no right and wrong there. It depends on how you want to use Trello. But I find that typically tasks should be broken up into pretty small bits if possible. Okay, so we've got a ready column, and that's basically ready for people to start working on. Uh, but what does someone do when they actually are ready to start working? We've got an in progress column for that. So typically when I work with my team, what I'll do is I will do a lot of the backlog uh, grooming and planning phase, and then I'll get things into the ready column. And at this point, I will try to keep this ready column in order so that the things on the top of the list are most important things that we want to start with first, and the things further down the list are going to be least important or least urgent at the moment. So a team member will look at this every day or week or however often, and they'll pull something over from ready to in progress. 
The other thing they do is attach themselves to the cart. So this shows us who's working on it and what is currently in progress. Now I have some sort of preferences that I would say are um, maybe unique, but at the same time, this is kind of a best practice for Kanban uh, flows in general. And uh, Trello is a Kanban based board system. Typically people should not be, should not have multiple projects in progress because you can't do two things at once. So right now today, my in progress would say record uh, this Trello video. And when I'm done with recording this video, that would get moved to the next column, which is done. So if you've got something and you get blocked on it, a lot of times what we will do is we'll go in and we'll add a label, we'll call it blocked. Now, I haven't set these labels up and we'll talk more about labels in a second. We'll add it to there and move it back to ready. So uh, that's an indicator that, hey, somebody needs to get involved with this card and make sure it's unblocked. And uh, that way we don't have multiple things in progress for a single person because then I don't really know what you're working on and there's no way for other people in the team to tell either. So typically that's the way that we handle that. Now, when something's in progress, uh, a lot of times uh, employees or team members are gonna start adding checklists to, to fill out some details, maybe list out deliverables uh, and things like that. And that's great. Another thing that you can do is you can use dates to a due date or a start date to help indicate when something is actually expected to be finished. Um, I like these a lot for uh, maybe setting dates around when we want to check in on that project next. So it might be we check on our project every week or so just to make sure it's making progress. Um, this is a, a, a good practice in general and due dates are really nice. You can also set these up so that you get notifications based on due dates. Uh, Trello notifications are kind of a whole nother, another thing, but um, definitely worth exploring a bit. Okay, so at this point, the work gets done and ideally the team member will eventually move this over to the done column, which is great. Uh, the last step that depending on the project may or may not you know, be worth doing is they'll mention uh, the person or stakeholder who needs to know when it's done. Uh, so we'll say something like this is complete. Let me know if you have feedback. Uh, and now in a more complex project one thing you can do and i've done in the past is i'll have a after in progress i'll have an in review column so we can look at what that would look like and instead of moving things directly to uh to done you would move things to in review and then the reviewer would move it into done i think that's good when you have a larger team and you have multiple stakeholders who review things we do this a lot with engineering projects but with some some kinds of projects like marketing things a lot of times we're, we're not ending up doing something that granular so we'll remove that for now but that's a good option something else you can do to help uh, smooth out your project management workflow Another great feature for project management in Trello are the conversations. And I've already touched on this, but we like to capture as much back and forth as possible in Trello cards rather than places like Slack or email. And the reason for that is that I can go back and look at a history of conversations in this card. And that helps a lot if, say, a project gets blocked and then a team member, another team member has to step in and fix it or deal with it. They can go back and look at the conversations. They can look at links that were shared, things like that. So conversations are really powerful. Uh, and you also want to start setting some response expectations. So if I set leave a comment for someone, uh, what's the typical response time going to be? We, we try to aim for about 24 hour response times on all comments in Trello, uh, about the same etiquette you might use with email. But if your organization needs faster turnarounds, then that's something you should consider. We already talked about due dates, but Trello has some other cool date features you can use. So for example, you can set a start date uh, and that might tell you like, this is when the uh, we expect to begin this project and then you might have an end date where it's due. Um, <clears throat> there's other, you can add custom fields as well and I don't have that enabled for this board, but custom fields can let you add other dates, uh, like maybe check-in dates or uh, if you have subtasks within this, you can have dates. They also recently added due dates to checklist items, which is pretty cool. Now, this is a business class upgrade, so I'm not using it on this Trello account, but we use that in some of our other, the other Trello organizations I have. Okay, so repeating tasks is the last thing that, uh, the last big thing I'm gonna talk about. And I think repeating tasks are a huge game changer for Trello. So what used to happen when we had tasks that needed to get done every week is we would have to have people that 
manually created a card every week or then eventually we used Butler to automate this and now it's even easier uh, because Trello has made a repeater power up that I'll show you how to use. So what I'll do first is I'll add a list at the very end here called recurring tasks or recurring. And in here I'm gonna do things that are gonna come back every week and we wanna make sure we always tackle. So post a new link on Facebook, right? So this is a common marketing task. We might wanna remind ourselves to do this every week. And so I'm gonna go ahead and look for the power up that is called, I think it's called card repeater, yep. And we'll go in here and we'll say repeat. And what we can tell it is every week on Monday, I want you to, and we can set a time, so let's say 7 a.m., I want you to put this in the top of the ready list. So what this does is, means that any employee who is a part of this board is gonna see, post a new link on Facebook at the top of their ready column every week. And so that's great because now we don't have to remember to remind someone to do this, it's just at the top of their ready column. So if people are really working off of Trello, which they should be, then the next task that they, when they're ready to grab a new task, they're gonna say, oh yeah, we gotta post a new link to Facebook, let's do that real quick. And then finally, the last thing I'll talk about, which is a pretty uh, more minor feature, or in it, but it's very flexible and use, useful for a lot of things, are labels. So I've already showed you how to use blocked as a label. And I like blocked because that's a the kind of big red mark that shows that something is, um, is not moving forward as expected. And so I can look at the board and quickly get a sense of what's blocked and what's moving smoothly. The other thing you can do with labels is you could label types of work. So maybe there's social media type of work on this board, and maybe there's also like uh, email type work. And this kind of depends on how you want to divide up your team, how you want to assign tasks. You could use that as a way to, you know, the, the social media team takes those cards, the email team takes the other ones. And you can ultimately filter your board by the tag or labels. So that's really helpful when you want to show people uh, just certain cards or, or see how many of certain cards are getting done each week. Another reason I use labels is to indicate urgency. So this one might be uh, like ASAP or something like that. Now, typically the order of cards in the ready column indicates which should be done first, but if something, maybe it's like a drop everything and do this, I might leave a comment and leave a, a label here that says ASAP, and that instructs my team member, hey look, I know we were working on email templates, but we gotta take a break, we gotta fix this problem right now. So that's really helpful for just keeping track of how many of these ASAP, uh, as soon as possible cards you have in a typical week, and maybe helps you figure out like some processes you need to improve. So that's how we use Trello for project management in a nutshell. I've done this with a number of companies in the past. It's always this basic flow has worked really well. And you know, we make tweaks as we figure out what works and what doesn't over time. But it's a really powerful tool and you can get away with the free plan for a lot of, a lot of basic work. Uh, eventually you will, like the, the paid accounts are really handy for adding more power ups, getting calendar views. Um, things like that that are, are really cool and can save you some time. But I encourage you to go ahead and get started with uh, Trello's free plan because it's a really great place to start.